All praises to the most high power, the great I am, loving kindness, the holy great one, the power of Zion. All praises to the all merciful Father, the one who was and is and is to come. We acknowledge the presence of all the heavenly angels, the earthly mother angels, the archangels, the seraphims, the cherubims, the orphanims, the office of the Christ. We acknowledge the presence of Yahweh Shai, and we acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Giving all honor, giving all glory to the Most High, and giving a shout out to your family. Several weeks ago, I did a video, and I expressed that I um, I felt like I was bouncing back from the same books, and I wanted to expand my my reading muscle. I wanted to stop doing videos, and I realized because. Scriptures are at best inadequate. The Bible is not a complete story. To make the Bible make sense, we have to go into historical records. We have to go into scientific records. We have to go into the occult section in the library. We have to look up esoteric writings. We have to look up lost scriptures. We got to make the story complete by reading other books. By going after this knowledge to bring in a perfect picture of what is being said or what is being or what is not being said. The people that have our scriptures have have given us just a little a little the just the bare bones of it. They have taken the the better part of it and they have kept it for themselves. The Most High have sent out his spirit out, okay? And the spirit of the Most High have descended upon a few. The few of us that the spirit of the Most High have descended upon to go out and seek and look and purchase and study these, these writings, we're going to come back and we're going to bring it to you. Speaking for myself, I am at best inadequate. I am ill-equipped. I am ignorant. I don't know anything. Okay? I don't know jack. I'm merely scratching, barely scratching the surface of a very hidden occult writings for that has that have been hidden for thousands and thousands of years. That our ancestors have studied for 20 years in schools. I'm merely taking a few days to read upon something, to bring it to you, to introduce it to you, so that you may go out, if it interests you, to go out and do some, some more research, some more study on your own, so you can ascertain the greater knowledge, the greater understanding, so that the Most High can send you His Spirit, so you can understand better for yourself. Don't just settle for what I'm bringing to you. What I'm bringing to you is merely... A little, it's just, it's nothing. It's nothing. Okay? There are so many writings. If I were to do videos, I wouldn't have time to do anything else. Okay? On top of that, you have to, to, to read it. You got to understand. And you have to bring it out in a way that it makes sense. Because this is not for everybody. It's not going to resonate with everybody. When I went into the secret writings of, uh, when I went into the secret teachings of all ages several weeks ago, and I covered the uh, Sefer Yetzirah, okay, and I talk about the Ayin Sof, and I talk about the Zohar, and we went into the Akashic Records, it probably made no sense to a lot of you. Some of this stuff didn't make sense to me at all. But I've been peeking in here and there for, for a while. I've been peeking in to see what is the Zohar, what is the Kabbalah, what are these all esoteric writings, this esoteric knowledge that we don't know. All over the Bible, is, it, it, it talks about our ancestors with great power. How did Yahweh Shai multiply fish and bread? Hmm? 
how did how did our, uh, the Druids in in South America make clouds come out of nowhere? How did these things happen? How do miracles happen? How does one raise the dead? How does one give sight to the blind? Is there a secret society of the followers of the way? Is there a secret society of the righteous? For those who are willing to go in head first and, and leave everything and go a little bit beyond the norm, will these ones be rewarded with something different than most people would? If I decide to look for something most people wouldn't look for, would I find something that most people wouldn't find? And in my search, would I be better off? Does it make any difference that I go and seek for that thing? You better believe it does. We're not going to talk about the Kabbalah right now. But I thought this was a very interesting quote from the Kabbalah, the secret wisdom of the Kabbalah. I thought this was a very interesting quote. And I wanted to start out with this. The beings who live below say that God is on high. While the angels in heaven say that God is on the earth. By the way, the Zohar was written by Abraham. The beings who live below say that God is on high. While the angels in the heaven say that God is on the earth. Family, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are, family? No wonder the Father had me saying to you, remember who you are. Children of the kingdom who manifest the gifts of the spirit. Children of the kingdom who manifest the gifts of the spirit. The spirit of the most high. This is not going to be for everybody. For some of you, all you want to hear is that, um, all you want to hear is, is the same old, same old. All right? I'm not knocking the repentance, holiness, righteousness, baptism, food others. I'm not knocking none of that. But there's way more to scriptures than just repentance. Look, if I got to tell you to repent of your sins today, if somebody got to keep beating you over the head to keep repenting of your sins and to live, to live righteously, then you deserve to die. You deserve to get your butt whooped because you haven't made up your mind to follow God. You haven't really decided within yourself to follow the most High with sincerity of heart. I don't have to come in here every day to talk about the same thing. And quite a skip, nobody has asked me to do that. I'm just saying I'm going to be bringing some more information to you. Because I am tired of regurgitating the same things to you back and forth in different books, but never really going beyond the norm. Now the Father has shifted my attention to something that I knew about, but never really went into. Okay? So all the, everybody who's going to leave me little silly comments and everything like that, you could go ahead with that. You can go ahead right now and unsubscribe for, for the, um, from this channel because I don't have time for you. I don't have time for you. You understand? The king live in a palace. The pig live in a sty. Suitable, suitable abode for both. Suitable abode, suitable home for both. The, key, the, the pig loves love the dirt. The king loves the palace. This is not for everybody. This is for the few hidden among the few. There is a few that is hidden even among the few. Watch this. Keys of Enoch, page 319. Keys 319. Before we get into anything, I got to give you this. Keys 319, page 545, number 6. 
and C. No, nope, nope. Let's go to number five. Forgive me. I saw how there was a restoration of the holy books out of the earth. That's what's going on right now. There is a restoration of the holy books from the earthly mother. These books are coming into our possessions and they cost a lot of money. Family, I have never asked anyone for money. Even when they gave it to me, I refused. But if you want to support this channel from this point going forward for books, I will take your assistance because these books cost a lot of money. And I will, take, I will buy the book and I will make it available to you so you don't have to go out and buy it. That's all I'm going to say about that. If you want to support, you could go ahead. My email is abdullah, abdullahc at gmail.com. Holler at me in my email and I will give you a way to support for books. Because I, I vehemently speak against, against people taking money from you. I'm against taking money from, from the subscribers. But I understand that you also have a role to play. I had to learn that from Big Judah. I had to learn that from other people who, 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 who told me that uh, I'm stopping them. I'm, I'm being a stumbling block in their ability to contribute in the walk. I didn't really understand that. Because I was still, you know, I still felt a way taking, some from, taking anything from you guys. I still feel a way about that. You know, taking anything from you. Because everything has already been taken from you. You know, I just started a channel about a year ago. And, you know, people were offering to support monetarily. And I said, no, I have not earned that. I have not earned your monetary support. That's why I refuse everybody who offered, right? That's why I refuse everybody, refuse from everyone who offered. But if you want to support for books, if this information that I'm bringing out resonate with your spirit and you want to support for books, all praises to the most high. Let's keep it moving. Keys of Inna, Keys 319, page 545, number 5. I saw how there was a restoration of the holy books out of the earth. And I heard these words spoken to me by the glory of the Yatser Amarath. And it says this. No. Know the mysteries and read the heavenly tablets that have opened in the earth. Now, heavenly tablets have opened in the earth. We have the secret teachings of all ages have opened in the earth. We have the Kabbalah have opened in the earth. We have the Zohar have opened in the earth. We have the Sifa Yetzirah have opened in the earth. We have writings from, the, from, from Egypt, they call it ancient Egypt, have opened the earth. Look, check this out. We're going to go back to ancient Egypt and we're going to put a final nail in the cuff in the coffin of ancient Egypt. Every time you hear the word ancient Egypt, you should only be thinking of yourself. Because the original inhabitants of ancient Kemet were the Atlanteans. So every time they talk about ancient Egypt, all you should be hearing is the Atlanteans. And the Atlanteans are the descendants of the Nephites. The descendants of the Nephites are the ten northern tribes, which are you. You are the descendant of the Nephites, and they are the Atlanteans, or Tia America. This is where they this is where the, the Nephites, the descendants of the Nephites, the Atlanteans, this is where they live in all Tia America. All over the Caribbean and all over the United States of America. This is you, family. I got to give you these precepts before I go into the book that I'm about to bring to you. Know the mysteries and read the heavenly tablets that have opened up in the earth. That have opened up uh, in the earth. Now you see, but Abdullah, these books have been out. Yeah, not in our hands. Remember in the second stick, it says when, 
when our books leave our hands and it goes into the hands of the Gentile, it becomes defiled. I don't know exactly where he said that because I forgot to look up the scripture. But once it leaves the Jew, it goes into the hands of the other nation, it gets defiled. But when you get it back, you get it back defiled. Whatever information we're bringing out from whatever book is still not complete. Even a first edition book is still not complete. It is a first edition of an original that you and I, we don't have access to. The book that I'm about to bring out to you is a first edition book. But it's a first edition of the time that it was printed. It is not the original. The original is somewhere in the Vatican. The original may be somewhere at Yale University. The original may be somewhere in Harvard. The original may be somewhere in some universities right here in America or in the basement of the Vatican, wherever that they want to keep the original. You understand? Number six. And see the holy books resurrected from the grades. The holy books are being resurrected from the grades. You understand? The holy books are being resurrected from all the grids of the earth. Not just the Taklamakan area. Not just the holy cities of India. Now when you hear about India, you got to ask yourself, who were the first inhabitants of India? The Nagas. Where did the Nagas come from? So, in the video Big Judah dropped yesterday, he, uh, they mentioned India in, in some other records. Well, I have a book that, that tells you exactly who were the first Indians and how the records got from where they were to India. I'll bring that out today. It, it goes perfectly with what the big homie was saying in his video. The holy books being resurrected from the grades, from India, from the holy cities of Kemet, Merigo, Syria, Akkad, holy cities of the sacred land of the West, America. We are being told to understand the writings and the inscriptions of light written in stone. You see that right there? You're not going to find these information in the books that you get for $10 on Amazon. Now, they have taken out those scriptures. They leave you powerless. They have taken out the power from the scriptures. They leave you with words. These people sit in their homes, in their offices, wherever that they go, they sit down and they're trying to come up with ways to manifest those writings. But they don't have the proper DNA to connect with the writings. You see, these writings, they're like a, a doorknob. No, these writings are like a lock. These writings are compared to a lock. And you are the key to that lock. Okay? You are the key that can open this lock, not them. Now, they can mess around and get a little something, something. But they can really get in fullness what they're supposed to get. No, that information is supposed to come through you. That power is supposed to come through you because you are a divine diaspora. You are a selective spiritual breed. You are an alien to this earth. Okay? You are an imposter. You are a soul in a body and you were not formed out of any races from this earth. You were created in the kingdom of lights by the father of lights. Number seven. I saw how there were thousands upon thousands of books that were part of a sacred language. Revealed once again to the children of light. That's you. 
These books are being revealed to us once again. Why? Because we are the ones who can interpret these books properly and connect these books with the proper scriptures so we can open that lock, so we can open the door of knowledge, so we can open the door of wisdom, so our brethren can walk in behind us, with us, next to us, so we can reconnect, so we can get renewed, so we can be repositioned, so we can be regenerated, so we can be reassigned, so we can become evergreen once again. Just like our daddy. Check this out. I saw how there were thousands upon thousands of books that were part of a sacred language revealed once again to the children of light. So that, why? So that the false structures of religion and history and his story would crumble. So that the church of Satan in the story that the church of Satan have given us over the past several thousand years would crumble. This is why we are receiving these holy books. This is why these holy books are being resurrected. There is a shift going on. I told you, you are biomutating from the inside. Your DNA is being changed, so therefore your needs, your wants are also being changed. The things that you like to do, don't want to do, are also being changed. The books that you like to read, don't want to read, are also being changed. All of a sudden, you want to get into different type of writing. The Ro Ro Rosicrucian order have thousands of books that belong to you. Go look up the Rosicrucian's order. Go look up the Rosicrucians. See how much of, their of your books that they have in their possessions. All of their churches, all of the temples are built after the Egyptians. They have nothing but black folks all over their walls. Look them up. You'll see what I'm talking about. Books that cost tens of thousands of dollars. Metatron said, I have opened your mouth to speak and to rejoice in the words of the Father. Okay? Now we get these books. Let's go to the next page. Number 17. Keys of Vina, Keys 319, page 546, number 17. Why are we getting these holy books? So that the false church of Satan would crumble. What else? I was shown how the religions of the earth will no longer alter and pervert the words of the righteous. Why? Because the righteous now are receiving their old writings. The righteous are receiving their old writings. And the righteous with the spirit of the Most High will be able to interpret their own writings. So the religions of the earth will no longer be able to alter these writings and pervert them no more. They will not be able to pervert the words of Enoch no more. They will not be able to pervert the words of Abraham no more. They won't be able to pervert the words of Yahweh Shai no more. They won't be able to pervert the words of Moses no more. Why? Because we have the spirit of the Most High and we are able to interpret to bring light, to bring understanding, to bring understanding, to bring overstanding, to bring wisdom to those scriptures the proper way. Why? Because we are the children of the light. We have the master key. The religions of the earth won't be able to lie and practice great deceits no more. As to the education of the soul. We don't need to learn from you no more. Now we good. Thank you very much. You've done enough damage. For the silence in the heavens will break forth into great thunder. As the scrolls of light are revealed from the earth and from the heavens in the greater universe. The scrolls of light are being revealed from the earth and from the heavens. So you're going to get revelation. Last night I had, a, I had a dream. I was... I walked into a building and I was given some writings and everyone else who walked after me, who wanted those writings turned into stone, 
everyone else who were inquiring about those writings, those scrolls that I was given, they turned into stone. The silence in the heavens will break forth into great thunder as the scrolls of light are revealed from the earth and from the heavens of the greater universe. Do you understand what time we're in right now? This is not the same old, same old, same old, same old. Let's go now to the Cobrin. Let's go to the Cobrin. Let's go to the Cobrin and get another precept before I take you in. Shoot. Before I take you to where I want to take you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This stupid thing is giving me problems. Okay. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Go back out. All right, let's go to the Cobran. Let's go to the bronze book. Every book you read now have esoteric knowledge. You just never saw it. Why? Because your spirit wasn't there. You were not aligned to see that right there. It's been there all along. You just didn't see it. Greetings, unborn ones. Now I sleep in the dark womb of the future. Cobran. Page 7, very front page. This is a letter from your ancients. They wrote you a kite from the grave. They are speaking to you from the hereafter. They're saying to you, greetings, unborn ones. Now, I sleep in the dark womb of the future. Greetings from we who were once as you are now. And like who you will be one day. We too hoped and feared, doubted and believed. They say we were once as you are now and like you and like who you will one day be. You see that right there? These are your ascended masters. They told you they were just like you, novices. They were like you, neophytes. Hmm? They were just like you. You were you are a neophyte, someone who was new to a subject, someone who was new to a skill or a belief. We'll get into that in another study. He says, were you choosing a gift from the past to the future, what would it be? Would you choose the golden treasures hoarded by kings? Will you choose the bright jewels beloved by queens? Is worldly wealth, is worldly wealth still important to you? If that would be your choice above all else, we are disappointed for our labors have been in vain. Okay, let me read you a few more lines to take you where I want to take you. He says, would you prefer the secret of life or eternal youth? Have you altered so little from those who live and laugh today with no thought turned towards the future? Hmm? This thing which seems so desirable to you, were it yours, would you value it? Would you still be grateful for it after a thousand years have passed? The answer would be yes if this life were all that there was. The beginning and the end, complete in itself. But might not this life be no more than a prelude, an introduction to something infinitely greater? Is the riddle still unsolved? You know, life is all about the riddle. Is the riddle still unsolved? The secret of ages still well kept. Known only by a few esoteric, you hear that? He says, is the riddle still unsolved? The secret of the ages still well kept. Known only by a few even when these words are read, even when they are read, 
Not everybody would understand them. They are still esoteric. They are still allegorical. They are still hidden. They are still sealed. You have to be an init initiated student to understand the esoteric knowledge. Remember, Enoch says, there is no way you can understand these writings. The only way you can get them is only you've been studied for a long time or you have been touched by an ascended master. I'm not claiming to understand anything. I told you I am dumb. I'm ignorant. I don't know what I'm talking about. I am merely trying to ascertain what's being said here. But, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High, the Spirit of Intelligence, I am being given exactly what I need right now to tell you. I'm being given the proper words to speak to you, just like Moses I told Enoch, open your mouth and wisdom shall be given you. Your ancestors saying to you right here, this we give you. The hidden books, the occult books, the esoteric books, we give you. And they contain accumulated harvest of wisdom and truth garnered over the generations. Truth, family, is an eternal youth. The truth is an eternal youth. You cannot challenge the truth. You may have your opinions. But the truth shall stand. This we give you the hidden books. Containing accu the accumulated harvest of wisdom. Containing the accumulated harvest of truth. Which have been garnered over the generations. They are the bread. They are the oil which sustains us and they have never diminished. May these hidden books serve you in your day as well as they served us. Above all, may you be sufficiently enlightened to receive them. Get your mind right, family. You're not going to hear the same old, same old from this channel. Now, I'm going to go back and give you prophecy. I'm going to go back and give you the words of Messiah, how it, how it applies to you right now, and what's going to come on the earth. All of that's coming. But get ready for a variety of things. Our people were priests, scientists. They were, they taught the entire world every Every science you could think of, law, mathematics, astrology, geometry, whatever the hell, our people were priests, scientists. They didn't just stay within uh, the scriptures. They went out. They went above and beyond. They had to learn how the earth worked. They had to learn how 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 to um how to design flying vehicles, how to use the body to for telethought communication, how to use the mind for telethought communication, how to how to teleport. They had to learn alchemy. They had to learn how to mix best metals, how to make one thing take it from one state. And turn it into another thing. Our people had to learn all these things. It wasn't just about reading the, the Bible. Reading whatever holy scroll that they had back then. The lie that the church of Satan have given you. Just pray and that's it. Oh hell no. We're giving you these hidden books. Let me tell you. The seal portion final testament of Jesus Christ. In the first chapter, when you open that book, it talk about the, the Melchizedek priesthood. Right in that chapter, they gave you a, a ceremony that you have to do when you become a high priest. That is esoteric knowledge. That's esoteric knowledge right there. That's, that's, a, that's a hidden custom most don't know or even don't understand. 
He said, may this book serve you as well as it served us in our days. We can only consign these books to the ground into the destiny. Trusting they will be called forth at the proper time and in a receptive generation. If I had a dollar for every time I read this to you, I probably would have had a hundred dollars right now. These books will be called forth at the proper time and in a receptive generation. And this is the proper time you are that receptive generation. And these books have been called forth from the ground and from destiny. Remember the riddle. If I had a dollar for every time I read this to you, I probably would have had a thousand dollars. Cobra in page 72, family, I have to give you this before I introduce you to the book. Because I know I'm going to have people leaving comments talking about nonsense and I don't got time for that. You see, you don't know what my purpose is on this earth shit. I, I don't even know. I don't fully know where this is going to lead. Because when I started, I was one way and today I'm totally different from a year ago. I don't know where this is going to end, family. I'm down for whatever. I'm a vessel ready to be used by the Holy Great One for whatever he needs me to do. If he wants me to put this down and just focus on taking trips and visit, visiting sacred sites, that I will do. If he wants me to do both, that I will do. If he wants me to put this down and focus on something totally different, that I will do. I am a vessel. Cobra in page 72, Mosai says, I shall seek the man who is himself ever seeking. The man who seeks to unravel the riddle of life. Remember, it's all about the riddle. The man who seeks to unravel the riddle of life. The one whose determination is strong. The one who detects, who detests wickedness. The one who delights in the good. I'm seeking the man whose heart and whose inner vision reach out for enlightenment. The one whose tranquility will remain unshaken under stress. And within his heart, there is a haven of peace beyond the reach of excitement and anger. I want the one who is a lover of wisdom, a seeker of truth, family. Are you a lover of wisdom? Are you a seeker of truth? If you are the most, I says, I'm seeking you. He says, I'm seeking the man who is wise. The one who knows what to do. Who remains calm when others lose their self-control. I'm seeking the one who is clear-headed under stress. Who enjoys the challenge of the task. That man is my family. I enjoy the challenge of the task. I come in not knowing what I'm doing. I rely totally, 110,000 times percent on the most high to lead me where I need to go. Which books to read, which books to buy, which books not to read, which books not to buy. He says, that man is mine. He who labors without complaint, who disdains to satisfy deforming lust. I want the one whose spirit remains the same under the temptations of honors, under the temptations of the pressure of disgrace. He who is free from the shackles of unworthy earthly attachments, who retains his balance under praise or under blame. If you say your good job, that was a beautiful study. All praises to the Most High. I have to maintain my balance under praise because the wisdom that was given to me to share with you did not come from me. It came from the Great Holy One. I want the one who can shoulder his own burdens, whose spirit is calm, whose spirit is silent, whose spirit is strong under all circumstances. He who can bear the responsibilities of life and the obligations of love, that man is mine. I am the God of inspiration. I am the God of love. I am the knower, and you, you are the known. All praises to the most high power. Family, let's go into the Kabbalion. Hermetic philosophy by the three initiates. 
This is one of the holy books being called forth from the earth and from the heavens. This is one of the holy books who's going to crush the church of Satan. This is one of the holy books written by your ascended masters, your brethren, assigned to destiny and time. Being called to the proper generation, the Kabbalion, Hermetic philosophy, your people, your bloodline are responsible for everything, for everything. We are responsible for every writing under God's green earth. We taught everybody. We taught everybody. In the secret teachings of all ages, Abraham, I'll, I'll take you there, but I, I'll finish this statement, but I'll take you there. Abraham went down to Egypt and he, he allowed a little bit of the knowledge to ooze out to the Egyptians. Just a little bit. After Enoch. After Shem. After Seth, you understand? The Kabbalion, Hermetic, Hermes, Hermes, Hermetic, Hermes. You see, from the word Hermetic, you hear Hermes, Hermes, or Thoth, Hermetic philosophy. Let's get into it. Let's go all the way to the front. Let's go here. Let's go to the introduction and, we'll, and we'll, go, we'll work our way backwards. It says, our intent is not to erect a new temple of knowledge, but rather to place in the hands of the student a master key with which the student may know or may open the many inner doors. A master key with which you may open you may open the chambers of your heart, the many inner doors in the temple of mystery through the main portals you have already entered. This is not to erect a, a new temple of knowledge. No, it's to upgrade you, make you better. The Hermetic philosophy, the Kabbalah, the Sifa Yatsarah, the Zohar, all these ancient writings is not to erect new temples in you. No, you're already a temple. It's to upgrade you, make you better. There is no portion of the occult teachings possessed by the world which have been so closely guarded as the fragments of the Hermetic teachings which have came down to us over the tens of of centuries which have elapsed since the lifetime of his great founder. They have had a stronghold, stronghold on these teachings. This book that I just presented to you is a first edition of the original. This book was about one, one, 125. There is no portion of the occult teachings possessed by the world which have been so closely guarded than the hermetic teachings. Which came down to us over the tens of centuries which have, which have elapsed since the last time of his great founder, Hermes Trismegistus. Enoch. Hermes Tris, Trismegistus. That is the founder of the hermetic's teaching. He was known as Hermes to the Greeks, Thoth to the Egyptian, the scribe of the gods. That's who he is, Enoch, scribe of righteousness. Hermes Trismegistus, the scribe of the gods. Enoch, scribe of righteousness. He dwelt in all Egypt in the days when the present race of men was in its infancy. We're going to talk about all Egypt one last time. We're going to put the nail in the coffin of all Egypt. Where did Hermes dwell in all Egypt? In the days when the present race of men was in its infancy. The first generation of men. 
contemporary with Abraham, which means he lived in the same time as Abraham. He was much older than Abraham. Remember, Abraham was taught by Shem. Abraham was taught the court by Shem. He was taught the priesthood by Shem. That's all they told you. He was taught the, the priesthood by Shem. He lived with Shem for 30 years or so. He was taught the priesthood. He was taught way more than that. Contemporary with Abraham, and if the legends be true, he was an instructor of Abraham. He was an instructor of that venerable sage. Hermes was and is a great central son of occultism, whose rays have served to illuminate the countless teachings which have been promulgated since his time. He was what? The great Central sun. Why? Why? Because he's from the motherland moon. He's an Atlantean. He's from the empire of the sun. S-U-N. He, he has, his rays have served to illuminate the countless teachings which have been promulgated since his time. This is why there have been no other writings which so much stronghold on them than the Hermetic's teachings. Okay? Let's keep reading. All the fundamental and basic teachings embedded in the esoteric teachings of every race may be traced back to Hermes. All teachings, all fundamental, all basics, teachings of esoteric knowledge may be traced back to Hermes. Even the most ancient teachings of India undoubtedly have their roots in the original hermetic teachings. This goes straight to the video Big Judah did yesterday in regards to India. Okay, I'll bring some more out on that in another video. Even the most ancient teachings, those teachings did not originate from India. No, they came from the motherland moon, Atlantis. They went to India because the Atlanteans went everywhere else. When they left, when they left Moon after the destruction of Moon, they went everywhere else, and they formed colonies. Out of the empire, they formed colonies. We'll go there. Give me a second. From the land of the Ganges, many advanced occultists wandered to the land of Egypt and sat at the feet of the master. From him they obtained the master key, which explained and reconciled their different views or di their, their divergent views. And thus, the secret doctrine, the secret doctrine was firmly established. Okay? When they got the master key, the proper, the, the proper explanation, the proper esoteric knowledge, knowledge from Hermes, it reconciled their views. And thus the secret doctrine was firmly established. From other lands also came the learned ones, all of whom regarded Hermes as the master of masters. Hermes, Trismegistus, scribe of the gods, master of masters. And his influence was so great that in spite of the many wanderings, from the path of the part of the centuries of teachers in these different lands, there may still be found a certain basic resemblance, a certain basic correspondence which underlies the many and often quiet divergent theories entertained and taught by the occultists of these different lands today. The student of compar comparative religions will be able to perceive the influence of the hermetic teachings in every religion worthy of the name. Now let's go back to Egypt for a second. Hermes Trismegistus, the scribe of the gods, dwelt in old Egypt. Let's go to old Egypt. Let's put that to rest. 
Give me a second. Alright. Okay, this book, first edition, $125 or $195 by the three initiates. $195 by the three initiates. Okay? We'll get some more on that three initiates. Let's go now to the book called The Children of Moon by James Churchward. Okay? James Churchward was an uh, archaeologist. He, he, he ran with the circle of uh, um, uh, Le Plejean, Madame Bravatsky. All these people wrote books that were, that they came with the truth. They, they really gave real information in these books. And they were hated for it. All right? Let's talk about O.D.G. for a second. Esoteric. Intended to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialized knowledge or interest. Remember that we already went over this. This is, this is a review for you, for you. Okay? The Children of Moon, page 149, chapter 9. Let's talk about old Egypt for the last time. The writer says, we're going to read the yellow part. My sole object in this work is, first, to show by records, not theories, who the original Egyptians were. And second, to show that the original settlers of Kemet were the children of Mu. And they came directly from the motherland Mu. The motherland to Egypt. See? He wants to, he wants, he, he's going to show by records, not theories, not opinions. Who the original Egyptians were. So every time you hear ancient Egypt, you need to know who they're talking about. It's just an esoteric word. Okay? It is a hidden mystery. In that word, ancient Egypt, to hide the original people. Second, he wants to show you who the original settlers in Egypt were. The original settlers in Egypt were the children of Mu. And they came directly from Mu, the motherland to Egypt. This will unravel the riddle. The apparent mystery encountered by ethnologists as to the origin of the Egyptians. And it will show the reason why the beginning of the, from the beginning of the Egyptian history, the Egyptians have been found to have been a highly civilized, cultured people. From the beginning, this is why the, the Egyptians have been found to have been a highly civilized, cultured people because the original inhabitants of Egypt came from Moon. They were Atlanteans. They were Atlanteans. The Nephites are the descendants of the Atlanteans. If that information resonates with your spirit, this is you. Egyptologists have gone far off the rails in their many theories and, dis and deductions on many points simply because they have not understood the symbology of the ancients and their symbolical writing. You see that right there? Because they don't understand the uh, allegorical, the sem symbology, the symbolical writings, they have misinterpreted the books. Nor could they comprehend the esoteric meanings of these writings. Why? Because they don't have a school to teach them. Just like we had a school at own in Memphis. They don't have those schools to teach them the esoteric meaning. Just like you and I today, we do not have those schools to teach us the esoteric meaning of these writings. So our only teacher is the Holy Spirit. And that's good enough. For this, Egyptologists cannot be blamed 
for no key has been found and no school existed where they they could learn where these esoteric meanings of these writings could be learned. No, they don't have the key. They don't have the master key. These secrets for many hundreds of years at least have been known only to a very few old oriental sages. Right, right, right. We have a lot of our writings in the East. That's why in the keys of Enoch, it tells you that the, the books are going to come also from the East. And these old sages spend their time in their temples and monasteries, seldom coming into contact with the, uh, with the outer world. Okay? Kemet, Egypt, was inhabited by the children of Mu. That's why they were highly civilized. You understand? You understand? The original inhabitants of Egypt were the children of Mu, who were Atlanteans. So every time you hear ancient Egypt, every time you hear ancient Egypt, just remember they are talking about you. They're not talking about the modern day Egyptians. They're not talking about Egypt as you know it today. No, they're talking about a highly civilized people who lived in that time, who migrated from Moon, from Atlantis. The secret teachings of all ages. You've seen this book already. Let's go down here and see something. I read this to you before, but I want to read it to you again. Page 311. The angel Raziel. Okay? Now, let's read the Kabbalah part first. Kabbalah means the secret of or hidden tradition, the unwritten law. Okay? Kabbalah was delivered to men in order that through the aid of his abstruse principle, men might learn to understand the mystery of both the universe about him and the universe within him. Not men, the children of light. Now, I have a book I'm going to bring out to you called the Holy Kabbalah. In the Holy Kabbalah, you're going to get a better understanding who the Kabbalah is for. The angel, okay? Okay, let's read the whole thing. The origin of Kabbalah is a legitimate subject for controversy. Early initiates of the Kabbalistic mysteries believe that its principles were first taught by the Most High to a school of his angels before the fall of men. The angels later communicated the secrets to Yatsikar, whom you used to know as Adam, so that through the knowledge gained from an understanding of his principles, fallen humanity might regain its lost estate. They're talking about you. The angel Raziel was dispatched from heaven to instruct Adam, Yatsikar, in the mysteries of the Kabbalah, different angels were employed to initiate the, the six succeeding patriarchs in this difficult science. Tophiel was the teacher of Shem. Archangel Raphael was the teacher of Isaac. Metatron was the teacher of Moses. Archangel Michael was the teacher of David. This is why I want to take you. Watch this. It is written from Yatsikad, the Kabbalah passed over to Noah and then to Abraham, the friend of God. Abraham Im immigrated with the Kabbalah to Egypt where the patriarch allowed a portion of this mysterious doctrine to ooze out. He just allowed a little bit of it to ooze out. Now, we're going to get into this more when we talk about the Holy Kabbalah. I just wanted to let you know who the original Egyptians were. Okay? Let's go back to this book. The Kabbalion, Hermetic Philosophy, chapter 1, page 15. From all Egypt. Now you know who the, 
the earliest inhabitants of Egypt are. When they say old Egypt, it is just an esoteric name to disguise the real people. You are old Egypt. You are the Atlanteans from the motherland Mu. Mu is the same as the Garden of Eden. That generation of people were taken back to the heavens. And the rest of them were destroyed by the great flood of Atuma. The flood of Noah. The people of Hermes, the people of Enoch, were taken to the heaven. They were translated. When the seraphims came down and took them out of the earth. Because nobody can leave the earth unless the seraphim sends the proper ark to take you out from this earth. Can nobody leave the earth unless the seraphim take you out. Or unless you pass through the portal of death. Nobody has been anywhere on the earth, from the earth to any other planets. They are lying to you. Not the elites. Maybe our people have. We know Enoch was taken to a, to a trip. We know Paul went to the third heaven and others. E Ezekiel um, went to the third heaven. A lot of people went, but they were taken by the seraphims. If the seraphim don't give you the light, the proper ark, you cannot leave the earth. Different levels to the earth. You cannot leave the earth. You cannot just run around wild in the earth. You can't do that. To go in and, and bring your filth to the other planets. Impossible. From all Egypt have come the fundamental esoteric and occult teachings, which have so strongly influenced the philosophies of all races. Remember, Abraham also allowed a little bit of the writings of this esoteric knowledge which he had in abundance to ooze out to the Egyptians. From all Egypt, all Egypt, have come the fundamental esoteric and the occult teachings which have so strongly influenced the philosophies of all races. All peoples, all nations, for several thousands of years. Egypt, the home of the pyramids and the Sphinx, was the birthplace of the hidden wisdom and the mystic teachings. Now, look, I'm telling you right now, I can just leave this alone and go to Egypt, to the pyramid of Aisa, and then to, uh, what's that, wisdom? What's that book Big Judah came out with? Irish Wisdom. Irish, Irish wisdom. Where are you? Irish wisdom. Irish wisdom. Give me a second. Irish wisdom. It's up here somewhere. Okay. I can go to the Irish wisdom right there. Okay, let me show you guys something, how amazing these books are. If you don't have these books, okay, or if you're not at least trying to read them when they are pre uh, presented to you, you are at a disservice. Now, we're going to go to the Pyramid of Aisa real quick. Pyramid of Aisa. We're going to go there real quick. I want to show you something. Hmm, I passed it. See, the mystery of the Sphinx, problem solved. Okay? The mystery of the Sphinx, problem solved. But we're not going to talk about the Sphinx. We, we, we are, not today, but I want to take you somewhere else. The Great Pyramid of Aisa. One of a, a group of four, namely Aisa. The largest, Chifron, the second in size, Mycerines, the third in size, and Asikos, Asikos, the least and the lowest of the group. But what were they? What was the, the pyramid of Aisa built for? What was it built for? Give me a second. Give 
Give me a second. Where the hell is it? See? I was just in it right here. Hold up. The Pyramid of Askias, the Pyramid of Masserines, the Pyramid of Chevron, the Pyramid of Aisai's next. There you go. I'm going to take you here real quick. I'll give you real quick a little something about this Pyramid of Aisai before we continue with the Kabbalion. So much, so much information, family. It's just, it's, I, I just can't give you the same old, same old every time. Okay? Okay, watch this, page 224. This great pyramid was designed to represent the spirit in the purified or regenerated men. No, this great pyramid was designed to represent the spirit in the purified or in the regenerated men and can clearly be understood from its special and peculiar construction and the disguise and camouflage names of Cheops and Jiza or Jeezy, which I've been given to it. You see that? The name is the Pyramid of Aisa. It's not the Pyramid of Giza. It's not the Pyramid of Jeezy. Or it's not the Cheops. Those names are disguising the original true name of the pyramid which was designed to represent the spirit of the most high in you and i okay you understand this is the great and living truth emblemos and emblemized in the great pyramid of aisa it was disfigured by the Romans when, the, uh, when they undertook to destroy all the monuments and the evidence of the elder Christian church, which would conflict with the false claims. You see that? They destroyed and disfigured the pyramid of Aisa because the ancient religion was in conflict with the new religion of Rome. Okay, when they undertook to destroy all the monuments and the evidence of the elder Christian church, which would conflict with the false claims set up by the Roman church adherents, their, their uh, Caesarea Borgia idols, all their crap that they put all over the churches. It was in conflict with the real thing. So what they do, they destroyed it. The great pillar represent or represented the spirit of God in an unregenerated world and emblemized, emblemized again a perfect world in a regenerated man. This great pillar was defiled and desecrated and a studied effort has ever since been made to keep the world in ignorance as to its real purpose and its real import as to whom it is inspired, its builders were. Okay? It has been a Psalm 83 effort to keep the world in ignorance as to the real purpose of the pyramid of Aisa and Empor and as to who its inspired, inspired, inspired builders were. Who was the builder of the pyramid of Aisa? Enoch built the pyramid of Aisa. It's not the pyramid of Giza, Giza, Cheops. No, it was Enoch who built it. Hermes Trismegistus. You understand? Now, when we go into this chapter, I'm going to cover it for you thoroughly. But you can go ahead and get, get yourself a little head start with the reading. If you'd like, I posted this link on my community page. Okay? Go get that. Read that right there. These are writings that were prophesied to come out at this time. I just read to you from the keys of Enoch. Okay? Let's go back to the Kabbalion. From old Egypt. 
came the fundamental esoteric and occult teachings, which have strongly influenced the philosophies of all races. The occult teachings that came out of it, old Egypt influenced the philosophies of all races, nations and peoples, for thousands of years. Egypt, the home of the pyramid and the sphinx, was the birthplace of the hidden wisdom and mystic teachings. No, it was not. That hidden wisdom came out of the motherland moon. It came out of Atlantis. Enoch or Hermes went down to Egypt. And Egypt now became a birthplace. Of the hidden wisdom and mystic teachings. It was not the birthplace. It became a place of the hidden wisdom and mystic teachings. Because Hermes lived there for a long time. From her secret doctrine, all nations are borrowed. From the esoteric writings that came out of the motherland moon. From the Atlantean priest king, Hermes, or Thoth. From those sacred writings, all nations are borrowed, including India, Persia, Chaldea, Media. China, Japan, Assyria, Greece, and Rome. There is no such thing, so no such thing as ancient Greece. All these nations are borrowed from the esoteric doctrines and scrolls of the Atlanteans. And other ancient countries partook liberally at the Feast of Knowledge, which the Hierophants, okay? There goes that word, Hierophants. Remember Neophants? Neophyte? A Neophyte is someone who is new to a subject or a skill or a belief, a beginner. Well, a Hierophant is someone who is proficient who is wise, who has a, a vast amount of knowledge in that subject. So you walk in as a neophyte, you walk out as a hierophant. You understand? A person, especially a priest, who interprets sacred mysteries or esoteric principles, hierophant. A person, especially a priest, who interprets sacred mysteries or esoteric principles. You understand? Hierophant. A neophyte. A neophyte is a person who is new to a subject or a belief. You walk, you walk in as a neophyte, you walk out as a hierophant, holding the master key. Okay? The, so let's read that again. Other ancient countries partook liberally at the feast of knowledge, which the hierophants and the masters of the land of Isis so freely provided for those who came. Now we're gonna get on. We're gonna get on Isis, Osiris, Ra. We're gonna talk about all those things and get to the bottom of all these names to show you where these names came from. Okay, just to bring to make everything make sense, just like it was told to you in the Kabbalion when I read to you from page eight. Not to, not to um, come up with new temples. No. But for you to, uh, how he says it, hold up, let me, let, let me get that properly. Hold up. He says, our intent is not to erect a new temple of knowledge within you. No, but rather to place in your hands a master key, 
with which you may open the many inner doors in the temple of mystery through the main portals you have already entered. That's why we're going to get into Isis, Osiris, Ra, Seth. We're going to get into all these things and so, so you can have the proper understanding. Okay? Masters of the land of Isis so freely provided for those who came prepared. They came prepared. They came with their notepads. They came with their pens. They came with their scribes, baby. They came prepared to partake of the great store of mystic and great store of occult law which the masterminds of that ancient land had gathered together. These countries, these nations, came prepared to partake of the mystic and the court law which the masterminds of that ancient land had gathered together. We're reading from the Kabbalion, page 16. In ancient Egypt dwelt the great adepts and masters who have never been surpassed. You get that? Who seldom have been equaled. Nobody come close. During the centuries that have taken their processional flight. Since the days of the great Hermes. In Egypt. Was located the great lodge of lodges of the mystics. At the doors of her temples entered the neophytes. The beginners. The novices. The new learners, the trainees. At the doors of the temple of the at the doors of the great temple of the large of the temple of the great large entered the neophytes, the students, who afterwards exited as hierophants, priests, priest scientists, masters. They entered as novices. They exited as experts. Hierophants. Masters. Adepts. Adept. A person who is skilled or proficient at something. Okay? A master. An expert. A genius. A wizard. Ace. A professional, a maestro. You understand? They entered as neophytes, they exit as hierophants, adepts, masters. They travel to the four corners of the earth, carrying with them the precious knowledge which they were ready, anxious, and willing to pass on to those who were ready to receive the same knowledge which they have acquired from the great lodge or the great lodges, the mystery schools in old Egypt, which were taught by the Atlanteans. All students of the occult recognize the debt that they owe to us. To these venerable masters of that ancient land. Remember Yahawashai says those of you who do my work right now. You are of the first generation. Those of you doing my work right now. You are of the first generation. But among these great masters of an ancient Egypt. There once dwelt one of whom masters hailed or held as the master of masters. Among the other great masters, there was one who surpassed everybody. Everybody said, this one, you can't even get close to him. Indeed he was. Indeed, indeed he was. He was a master of masters indeed. He dwelt in Kemet. In the earliest days, he was known as Hermes Trismegistus or Trismegistus. He was the father of the occult wisdom, the founder of astrology, the discoverer of alchemy, 
The details of his life story are, are lost to history. Lies upon lies upon lies. Let me tell you about the details of his life story. Let me give you the details of Enoch. They're not lost to anybody. You're just lying. Let's go to the book of Enoch. Book of Remembrance of Enoch. Okay? Let's go to the book of remembrance of Enoch. Let's go. Let me see. Let me see. Uh huh. No, not here. Let's go to the book of remembrance of Enoch. Let me see if I. Let me, let me just read it for you. Go to the book of remembrance of Enoch. Chapter 2. Seth 2. Okay? Let me see. This is not lost to anybody. We, we have the ancient writings of Enoch. Okay? We have the, the early days of Enoch. We have the early days of Enoch, y'all. It's not lost to anybody. It's alive from the pits of hell. Okay? Give me a second. Mm -hmm. I just had it here. Hold up. Out of here, all right, all right, all right, family. Just know that you you have it. Go to my studies. Go to my old lessons. Go to the first or second chapter of the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, the Essen Book of Haggai. Okay, I I believe Seth one, page thirty seven. Okay. He shall be called Enoch because he is raised up to fulfill the oath the Most High made to us concerning our return to Egypt or concerning our return to Eden. He shall be dedicated from the day of his birth to protecting the righteous from the wicked intentions of all those who give rise to the Nephilim. And your son shall bring great divisions upon the earth. Okay? And let's go to page 38. Listen to this. And Naba says, His writings shall go to future generations that are far distant. His writings shall speak with great power the truth of the ages. And the day will come, the day will come that all the peoples of the earth will be influenced by that which he can bring. Isn't that what we just read here? Didn't we just read that here? In ancient Egypt, everybody came ready to learn from the master of masters, Hermes Trismegistus. Huh? The high offense masters of the land of Isis freely provided for those who came prepared. To partake of the great store of mystic and occult law which the masterminds of that ancient land had gathered together. They came in as neophytes, they left as hierophants, learning at the great lodges from the master of master, Hermes. He was known as Hermes Trismegistus. He was the father of the occult wisdom, the founder of astrology, the discoverer of alchemy. Okay? His writings shall go to future generations that are far distant. They shall speak with great power the truth of the ages. And the day will come that everybody on the earth will be influenced by that which he can bring. You understand? 
And he will be called upon to do this. So that in the end of days, during the great tribulations, and during the time of the gathering, his writings will cause the righteous to receive the inheritance of Gabriel. You understand? This is where we at, family. So, so the details of his life are not lost to history. That's his story. The date of his sojourn in Egypt, in that his last incarnation on this planet, is not now known. It's not known. But it has been fixed at the early days of the eldest dynasties of Egypt, long before the days of Moses. The, see now, see how they, they bring Moses into that? So that tells you who they're talking about here. The best authorities regard him as a contemporary of Abraham. They lived around the same time, but he lived before Abraham. Abraham came much after, you understand? So they're actually wrong with that. Uh, I'm not sure if, if Enoch was still alive when Abraham was born. Probably was, probably was. But Abraham was taught by Shem. Right? Enoch had already been translated back to Eden. Some of the Jewish tradition go so far as to claim that Abraham acquired a portion of his mystic knowledge from Hermes himself. As the years rolled by after his passing from this plane of life, tradition recording that he lived 300 years in the flesh, 365 years actually, all right? The Egyptians date deified Hermes. Yes, they did. The Egyptians deified a uh, uh, deity, deified Hermes, and made him one of their gods under the name of Thoth. Okay? Hermes to the Greek, Thoth to the Egyptians. Years after the people of ancient Greece also made him one of their many gods, they call him what? Hermes. The God of wisdom. The Egyptians revered his memory for many centuries. Yes, tens of centuries. Calling him the scribe of righteousness. The scribe of the gods. Bestowing upon him distinctively his ancient title. Tris Majestis. Tris Majestis. Which means the thrice great. The great great. The greatest great. Master of masters. In all the ancient lands, the name of Hermes Trismegistus was revered. The name being synonymous with the fountain of wisdom. But of course, they're going to reveal his name. Hermes Trismegistus. The Egyptians deify Hermes and call him Thoth, Atlantean priest king. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth, the Atlantean. Okay? Let's see. Listen, O men, to the voice of wisdom. Listen to the voice of Thoth, the Atlantean. Freely I give to you of my wisdom, gathered from the time and space of this cycle, master of mysteries, son of the morning, Thoth, the teacher of men is all, is of all, is of the most high. He's telling you about himself. This is Enoch, whom they call Thoth, whom they call Hermes. Scribe of righteousness, Atlantean priest king. Long time ago in my childhood, in my childhood, I lay beneath the stars on long buried Atlantis. Dreaming of mysteries far above men. Then in my heart grew there a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. Right? And we know from the other book of Enoch, Enoch was taken to the stars. He took a trip. He, he saw all the heavens. He conquered the pathway that led to the stars, literally. Year after year, I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge. See? You got to be like Enoch. You got to seek new knowledge. You cannot stay stagnant. Year after year, I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge, following the way until at last 
My soul in great travail broke from his bondage and bounded away. Free I was from the bondage of the earth men. I was free from the body. I flashed through the, through the night. He's talking about his spirit men. Unlocked at last for me was the star space. Free I was from the bondage of night. Now to the end of space I sought wisdom. Far beyond knowledge of finite men. You understand? Now you could go ahead and read this on your own. I just wanted to take you here real quick. Something else I want to show you about that. Something else I want to give you about that. Where did I put it? Let's get out of here. Let me see. I want to give you something else about that right there. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. You frozen on me? Okay. Let's go get it. Let's go get Thoth, the Atlantean. Let's go get it, y'all. So much. I mean, I'm so excited when I'm reading these books. They resonate with my spirit. You know? They resonate with my spirit, man. I tell you. I tell you. I'm a neophyte. I plan to be a hierophant one day in the new kingdom. In the new kingdom. You understand? Oh no, it's not that far up. Give me a second. Did I did I make it? Hold up. Wait. Uh, give me a second. What page is this? No, not this one. I got you, I got you. No worries, I got you. I just had the page. I'm going to get it for you. Okay? You know, I'm not tech savvy. None of that. Just giving it to you like it is. You know? In this book, also talk about Thoth. Right here. Uh, what book is this? This is the Sacred Network. Megalith, Cathedrals, Ley Lines, and the Power of Shared Consciousness. Also talk about Thoth right here in this page. See that Hermes Trismegistus. But for whatever reason, this page is, 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 is foggy. It's not, it's not giving me what I want to show you properly. You understand? All right? I did this in the past. Okay? Thoth known in Greece as Hermes Trismegistus, who's... Uh, Yeah, I can't read it, y'all. You know, I'll bring it to you in another... I'll bring it to you again. Let's put it this way. Did it before, we can do it again. Let me see if you're okay. Let me see. Always talking about wisdom. Always talking about the, the higher wisdom. Get that, get that wisdom. Okay? All right, in this page, uh, he talks about going down to Egypt. All right, let me see here. Okay, he talk about going down to Egypt here. Let me see. Talk about the halls of a mount of a manti. Uh, let me see. All right, let me see here. Page 9. The emerald tablets, the halls of Amenti. Deep in the earth, hearts. Deep in the earth's heart. Lie the halls of Amenti. Far beneath the islands of sunken Atlantis. Halls of the dead and halls of the living. Bathe in the fire of the infinite all. In the fire of the most high. That's the infinite all. Bathe in the fire of the most high. For in a past time, lost in the space-time, the children of light look down on the world, see the children of men in the bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond, knew that they that only by freedom from bondage could men ever rise from the earth to the sun. 
Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of men as their own. <laughs> the masters of everything said after their forming, We are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all, living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. Who are you, family? You are the children of the kingdom and you manifest the gifts of the spirit. You are a divine diaspora, a selective spiritual breed created in the kingdom of lights, living in the world as children of men, like them, yet unlike the children of men. Space dust. Space dust, star seed. <laughs> Go ahead and read this, y'all. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you. I was looking for the page where he actually went down to Kemet. I, I was looking for that page. I think it's over here somewhere. Let me see. Yeah, there you go. Page six. The history of Thoth the Atlantean. I, Thoth the Atlantean. Master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after. These records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of Kior, on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation. Give me a second. Give me a second, family. Texting my wife. In the great city of Kior on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation, not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live. No, we don't, we don't live like them, he says. We don't live like them, we don't die like them. That's not how we do. He says, Rather, from eon to eon, did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. You see, family? This is what you lost. You don't have to die like everyone else. No, your ancient ones. They renew their lives in the halls of Amenti, in the river of life which flows eternally onward. You understand? You understand, family? You understand, family? This is what we're trying to get back to, where we can renew our lives. Shoot. In the halls of Amenti. From eon to eon. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into the light. And as many times have I descended from the darkness into the light. My strength and my power renewed. Now for a time I descend. And the men of Kem, Kemet, Egypt, shall know me no more. But in the time yet unborn, I will rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of Kemet, if you have falsely betrayed my teaching, which you have done, 
Beware, men of Kim, if you have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast you down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from where you came. Where did the Egyptians came? The darkness of the cave. Hmm. Okay. Those later Egyptians will be cast down from the darkness of the cave from which they came. When our brother Enoch thought, run upon them, whenever that is. He says, betray not my secrets to the men of the north. Who that? The Greeks, the Romans, don't give them my secrets. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or to the men of the south. Lest my curse fall upon you. Remember and heed my words, for surely I will return again. For surely I will return again, and I will require of you that which you guard, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding, punishing, as you have requited you, your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days. Great were the Atlanteans in the ancient days. Remember, Thoth, the Atlantean master of mysteries, Keeper of records, mighty king, magician, Atlantean priest king. He's telling you right here, he says, Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me. Knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity, knowledge that belonged to the earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire, the most high. He is the eternal fire. And of all these greatest, and of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Tatme, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light, who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands in the motherland Mu? There were ten tribes. Each tribe inhabited an island. Mouthpiece after the three. Whose three? The three initiates. The Kabbalion. The Kabbalion. The three initiates. The Kabbalion. The three initiates the three initiates mouthpiece after the three of the dweller of Unal speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed go ahead family read the rest on your own okay hermetic philosophy all right He was known as Hermes Trismegistus. He was the father of the occult wisdom, the father of astrology, the discoverer of alchemy. Okay? The Egyptians deify him, call him Thoth. The Greeks call him Hermes. He was a scribe of the gods, scribe of righteousness. He is called Hermes Trismegistus, the great, great, the greatest great, etc., etc. In all the ancient lands, the name of Hermes Trismegistus was revered. Put some respect on it, deep respect on his name. The name being synonymous with the fountain of wisdom. Even to this day, we use the term hermetic in the sense of secret, sealed. So that nothing can escape. 
in this by reason of the fact that the followers of Hermes always observe the principle of secrecy in their teachings. In the book of the remembrance of Aki, it talks about being discreet with the truth. Always, the ancients always practiced secrecy. They always were being discreet with the truth. They never told whoever it was on a need-to-know basis all the time. They did not believe in casting pearls before swine. They did not believe in Matthew 7 and 6. Or they believed in that. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Okay? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Even to this day, we use the term hermetic in the sense of secret, sealed so that nothing can escape. And this, the reason we do this is this, is for the fact that the followers of Hermes Always observe the principle of secrecy in their teachings. Esoteric. They did not believe in casting pearls before swine, but rather held to the teaching. Milk for babes, meat for strong men. Both of which maxims are familiar to readers of the scriptures, of the Christian scriptures. Right? Isaiah what? Let me see. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys already know it. If you go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 2, it says, I gave you milk, or I fed you milk, and not, I fed you with milk, and not with meat, for you are not able to bear it. You are not ready for prime time. Paul says, I gave you milk, not solid food. For you are not ready for prime time. Indeed, you are not still ready. You are still not ready. Hebrews 5 verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Let's get that in the easier version. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's words all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Hebrews 5 verse 12. The hermetic teachings, the principle was based upon not casting Pearls to swine. Okay? Need to know basis. They observe the principle of secrecy in their teachings. Need to know basis. You understand? Need to know basis. That's why he said both of these maxims are familiar to the scripture, to the Christian scriptures. Both of which have been used by the Egyptians for centuries before the Christian era. All right, family? I will read to you everything one of these days, just not today. Let's read this part. The, page 222. The art of hermetic alchemy, which contrary to the general belief, dealt 
in the you know what? Let's not get into that. That's a whole nother chapter. That's a whole nother subject. Okay? Okay? That's a whole nother subject. And we're going to get into the seven hermetic principles soon. Watch this. Likewise, when the pupil is ready to receive the truth, then will this little book come to him or to her. Such is the law, the hermetic principle of cause and effect. And this aspect of the law of attraction will bring lips and ear together, pupil and book in company. So be it, so mote it be. The teacher will come out when the student is ready. Let's see how it says here in this book. In the words of the Kabbalion, where fall the footsteps of the master, the ears of those ready for his teachings open wide. The Kabbalion. Where fall the footsteps of the master, the ears of those ready for his teaching open wide. When the ears of the student are ready to hear, then comes the lips to fill them with wisdom. The Kabbalion. The teacher will come out when the student is ready. You heard me say that before. The student, will, the teacher will come out when the student is ready. Are you ready for prime time, family? Wherever the master go, wherever he step foot, the ease of those ready for his teaching will open wide. The ears of the student who are ready to hear, when they are ready to hear, then comes the lips to fill them with wisdom. Okay, let me see if I have anything else to give you on this before I go. If I prepared anything else to give you before I go. This is it. This is it. The beings who live below say that the God is on high, while the angels in heaven say that God is on the earth. Family, we're going to get into all these writings. All these hermetic, esoteric, Kabbalah, hidden, occult writings. We're going to link it up with scriptures. All right? I got some great things to bring out to you. I've been doing a lot of reading. We're going to connect a lot of dots. We're going to connect them with the Melchizedek book. We're going to connect them with the Bible. We're going to connect them with the seal portion. We're going to connect them with the seal book of Moses. We're going to connect them with the book of Moore. We're going to connect them with the keys of Enoch. We're going to connect everything together because they all belong to us. Not to build new temples of worship, no. But to open up the portals to which we have already gone through. To give us a better view. To give us a better Understanding, overstanding, understanding. I pray that this lesson give you a new perspective on these writings. Just like you, you know, I I was I was not sure if I wanted to get into these type of writings, but the most I made me uncomfortable. And push me in it. He says. That's exactly the type of writings I want you to get into. He pushed me into it. And I had no choice. You know. Uh, my delivery and my flow is different. You know. I'm, I like to go into different books. And connect everything together. I can't stay in one location with you. My delivery is different. You know. I try my best to bring it out. The way it comes out of me. So. I'm not making excuses or apologies for anything. I'm just letting you know that um, 
if, if I go to a book, it might take me an hour and a half or two hours to really divulge to you what I want to tell you. You don't have to watch the whole thing all at once. You can, you know, come back to it and whatnot. It is what it is. Everybody's cut differently. I'm definitely cut from a different cloth. But we are all from the master cloth. We all have a purpose. We all, we all have a created purpose. We, have, we all have an agenda in the many different vineyards of the Most High. You know? It's not all about voice of warning upon the earth. No, you already know what time it is with the earth. You already know this, this society is being destroyed. You already know the old the old world is being done away with. You, you're going to inherit a new heaven. And you're going to inherit a new earth. There are so much more to learn. So many more portals to go through. To extract this information. So many places we have to go to. So many things we got to do. Alright family. If this information resonates with you. Like the video so others can see it. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, these books cost a lot of money. I'm going to bring it to you anyway. But now I'm going to accept. If you offer, I'm going to accept your support to buy books. So I can, I'll make those books available to you. You will not hear me talk about this ever again. All right? I'm not going to talk about supporting for anything ever again. This is the first and the last time. If you didn't hear it, then so be it. If you heard it, all praises to the Most High family. Look out for more videos. Until next time, may peace be with you.